I do a fair amount of panoramic photography. Uh, I particularly like the wide angle of view that you get and the f sense of inclusion into a kind of landscape that you feel like you can actually step into the photograph itself. Before I dive into this particular video on creating perfect panoramics, please remember to put a like and a subscribe, a comment or anything. The more views that this channel gets, the more chance that I'll be able to continue making videos like this. You're doing your bit by hitting that tick box. Thanks very much. It's not particularly hard to be able to create a panoramic as I've shown in a previous video looking at Capture One and how you can stitch your panoramics together. It doesn't require a bucket load of equipment or anything specialized to be able to take photographs like this one in the Drakensberg or this particular image from Namibia or one of my favorite images still is a panoramic photograph taken from a drone while I was shooting in Madagascar several years ago. All of these photographs were taken very simply using just a basic stitching software like the one available in Capture One Pro or the one available in Adobe Camera Raw. So you don't need a whole lot of stuff to be able to take these photographs. And I pointed this out in the last video that I looked at how to stitch the photographs in Capture One software. Someone did point out though that if you are going to be photographing up close objects you might need some specialized equipment and there are certain things available to be able to take these photographs. I will always point out that one of the first things that you need to think about is getting your camera absolutely level at the base of the tripod itself, which is one of the reasons I really like the Leofoto CEX tripod range, which have an included half ball on the top of the tripod legs, meaning that you can level out your ball head itself or the whatever head you happen to have on top of your camera. Video tripods have a half bowl built in almost de rigueur. It is standard practice. It's found less frequently on photocentric tripods, which is what makes the Leo Photo CEX range kind of unique. You'll see similar um, tripods also from the likes of Really Right stuff. I think Sarue also have a tripod with a leveling base on it, but I use the Leo Photo and I'm particularly fond of this particular tripod, uh, or at least this range of tripods. However, you can still get a nice leveling base without actually buying a specialized tripod like this one, which in this case is the LS324 CEX. What you do is you buy a leveling base like the LB60N, also from Leo Photo, but all of the other tripod manufacturers have similar tools. Now this goes in between your tripod legs and the head that you're using so that you can level out the base. Now the reason why we're going to level out the base is that when you're creating a panoramic, if you don't have an absolutely level base, you're going to get really squiff horizons and the whole tripod or the whole setup is going to be harder to be able to stitch in post-production. You're also going to lose detail that you're going to end up having to crop out just to be able to straighten your horizon. So that's step one, is that you have to be able to get a nice level base. That's the easiest, easiest way to be able to get perfect panoramas. As someone pointed out in the comments section of the last video though, what about the optical center of a lens itself? The reason behind the comment is that when you twist your camera from left to right or right to left or even up and down, what's happening is that you are having errors of parallax. As the camera rotates, you're going to have certain things moving in relation to others between the foreground and the background. The reason behind this is that the optical center of the lens, the turning point should be so that you can maintain everything, isn't the camera platform where you are situating your camera, it's somewhere on the lens itself. So this means that if you actually want to have the best possible panorama, you need something that is going to hold the camera back away from the tripod base and put the optical center of the lens right at the center of the tripod where you're going to be rotating your camera from. Now, if you're photographing scenes like this one in the Drakensberg, which is taken with a long lens, parallax is non-existent. You're not actually going to see any issue, particularly as your, your optical center between where you're moving and your lens is probably dozens of meters out in front of your camera itself. So you don't need to worry about that. So I'm out here in a wooded area close to where I live in KwaZulu-Natal, and I'm looking for a scene that is more complicated, that has a very near foreground receding out into a background so that you can see how the parallax can be overcome using the correct equipment. The simplest way to get the camera so that it is back from the tripod clamp itself and have it over the, over the optical center of the lens is to use something like this. Now this is a Leofoto NR200 plate and it comes with a clamp on it as well. The basic principle is if I put this on my tripod, it means that I can get my camera further back and potentially I can shift 
the plate so that we can line up the optical center of the lens with the center of the tripod itself. Now the easiest way to find where the optical center of your lens is, is to mount your camera onto your plate so you can see how it is already set back from the camera itself. Then what you're going to do is you're going to find two objects that are aligned with each other. If you line up two objects in front of each other so that they are absolutely in line with each other, if you move your head ever so slightly to the left or the right, what's happening is that the alignment is going to go out of sync. That's what's happening with your camera when you don't use the optical center of the lens as the turning point for your panoramas. So what we're going to do is we're going to find an object. You could put a pencil in your office or two pencils upright or two sticks or whatever you want to use. And we're going to rotate the tripod until those two items never go out of alignment, regardless of which way you are swinging your tripod. Once you have that set up, it means you found the optical center. Now the problem with doing this with a zoom lens, your optical center is actually going to change depending on the zoom that you are using. I've got a 16 to 35 millimeter lens on this particular tripod, so if I want to find my optical center, I have to set the lens to a particular zoom length and then work out where that optical center is. If you're clever, what you'll do is you can make markings on your plate itself so that you know at which zoom lengths you can actually get your optical center. So if I have my lens set to 24 millimeters, I need to have my LR200 positioned at 120 millimeters uh, at the center point of the tripod. And if I have my lens set to 16 millimeters, I have to have that further out at about 140 millimeters from center. You'd have to mark down which your lenses are. If you've got prime lenses, it's a little bit easier at least because you can just set it and you can mark it down on the lens or something somewhere so that you know this is the optical center of the lens and you can then just quickly set it up whenever you're shooting. Now one of the easiest ways to see a panorama as well is to use your phone. Simply take your phone, stick it into panoramic mode, go to your object of scene that you're photographing and do a quick pano. And you'll get a basic premise of what the final photograph is going to look like. So I use that as a planning technique very, very regularly. Now the advantage of using this system, having it based away from the actual tripod itself or away from the ball head itself is that you no longer have parallax which means that your actual stitching software is going to have an easier time of putting your photographs together and you'll also find that suddenly more of the actual uh, modes or uh, algorithms that actually stitch the photographs together are going to work. In the past if you were photographing without this kind of setup you'd find that for instance the perspective is never going to work. It needs to fill in the gaps somehow. As soon as you start using a setup like this keeping the optical center on the center of the tripod itself suddenly you'll find your perspective is going to work better. Is this necessary? No, absolutely not. A lot of the photographs that I take, I've been lazy and all I've done is I've leveled the actual base of the tripod and I've shot and that's as far as I go. And for the most part, 90% of the photographs that you're going to create are going to be just that, absolutely fine. You don't need this particular setup. However, if you're going to be doing really, really up close panoramas or you're doing panoramas where there is a lot of geometric shapes taking place. So for instance, this photograph that I shot recently for a client in a warehouse, then using a system like this is the only way that you can actually get around and get an accurate representation of the scene as a panoramic view. The other tool that goes with this, of course, is having an L bracket. The L bracket fits to the side of the camera and it allows you to mount your camera on a vertical axis. And again, it's the same setup as with horizontal. I can now do a very, very wide stitch doing vertical photographs of the scene and then stitching them together. And by having the optical center of the lens as the rotation point, there is no parallax. So you get perfect panos. Okay, so the procedure is I found my composition over here that I quite like. So we're basically going to get this down to have the tripod leveled at the base. So I'm using my ball head, getting that leveled up. I'm then going to make sure that when I rotate, the camera is also level by using the level on the back of the camera. The advantage of using a leveling base is that I don't have to keep my horizon centered. I can actually tilt down, which is the idea over here as well. And that should look pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to get my exposure up. Because I have such a 
deep range of things that it need to be in focus from the branches and the trees just in front of me through to the background I'm going to use quite a small aperture of around f16 and which means it's going to be a fairly long exposure um, you can of course do focus stitching but that is also going to add to the complexity of the photograph in the end I am also using a polarizer to be able to get the foliage nice and green and there we go one Two, three, four. It's also good practice to make sure that you have a exposure delay on your photograph so that there's a two second delay from the time you press your shutter through to the time it actually takes the photograph. To me, this is the simplest way to be able to shoot panoramas because it doesn't require that much extra equipment. As it is I always carry a tripod with a leveling head. If you don't have a tripod with a leveling head you can always buy an additional leveling head and add that to your tripod rig. So that's the one cost that's involved there. The next thing of course is to have the L bracket so that you can do vertical stitches of your panoramas and the last is this little trick which is the plate. This is small, light, relatively inexpensive, and allows for making really, really detailed, very accurate panoramas. So in a way, it's a absolutely essential piece of kit if you're wanting to do that kind of photography. At the end of the day though, you don't absolutely have to have any of that to be able to create a panorama. You can even do handheld panoramas. Just don't expect absolute precision when it comes round to certain images that you're going to shoot. But you can get away with it. So for instance this photograph was taken by hand in Namibia recently. There's obviously parallax issues inside that but you don't see that in the final photograph. Creating a photograph like this one in this conservancy area near Durban would be almost impossible without using this particular rig of having a plate that takes the camera back and putting the optical center over the center of the tripod itself. All right thanks again for watching so let's see you again. Cheers.